you know, I had overdosed before, but this time it was different. Um, I overdosed in my best friend's bathroom. When I opened my eyes from total darkness, there was no light on the other side for me. It was total darkness. Um, I opened my eyes. My mom was there. The EMTs, I've got cops there. I've got my best friend. I've got my man there. But I had my mom there. And she's just crying. I'd been hit four times with Narcan. And when you come out of that darkness to hear nothing but screams and crying, especially from a mom or just someone you just, that's a big part of your life, it's hard. Um, It killed me. For months and months, that night replayed in my head, especially being in jail. I had to sit there with my thoughts. You locked in that cell for majority of the entire day. It's like 21, 22 hours a day. And I was like, I'm done. So I got offered drug court eventually. I took that shit. When Destiny lost her father at a young age, all she felt was pain. Heroin and other drugs numbed that pain for a while. Once jail became a visit that she wasn't willing to make anymore, she was offered drug court, a local rehabilitation program instead of jail time. She took it seriously and succeeded. Today, with four years clean, she tells us how life was versus how life is, right here on Chopping It Up. Thank you for coming. No problem. <laughs> I appreciate you making time for today. You look very lovely. Thank you. Absolutely. You said you wore your recovery shirt. I did. No story should end so soon. Right on. That's what's up, too. Yeah. So how long have you been clean? So I have a little over four years right now. My clean date is January 7th. Okay. So. Come in just yeah. a little bit closer. Like this? Pull it into you. Yeah, there you go. So you can stay comfortable. Like this? Yeah, you hear yourself a little better? Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So four years from what? <clears throat> well, mm -hmm. my main choice is heroin. Okay. But I was pretty much into whatever was given to me. So trash can junkies, what I've been called. But my main choice is dope. So. It started out with heroin or it started out with pills? Oh, gosh. <clears throat> So I started off, you know, I was real young drinking. Mm -hmm. I was probably like nine years old, <laughs> trying to steal my mom and pop stuff. It went from that to me smoking a little bit to doing some pills. Okay. It went from pills to just going on to Coke. I ended up doing some crack. And by the time I was 18 out of high school, I found the thing that I thought I fell in love with. Okay. What year was that? Oh, God. All right, so I'm 28. Uh-huh. This was at 18. 10 years ago? 10 years ago. So you were still finding good heroin then? It wasn't fentanyl-based heroin? So actually, the first time I did it, I didn't feel nothing. It didn't really affect me. I guess, you know, I had done other stuff before. I'd partied so much before. I was like, oh, whatever. But I was like, but I'm curious. Like, I hear all this stuff, and I'm like, well, I'm going to try it again. Right. I'm a party, okay, whatever. I've been kicked out of my mom's house. I was like, you know, I'm going to live my life. And so I tried it again. It's a little better. And I was like, all right. And you're snorting it? Yes, I was snorting okay. it at the time. And then I met a guy. <laughs> Ain't it always. <laughs> and he was a dealer at the time. Well, then I ended up dating him. And he, he ended up getting some good shit. And it just went from there. Snowballed quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I saw how he was doing it. Which was? He was shooting it up. Uh -huh. And he wouldn't let me do it. Or refused to let me do it. That's probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah. He tried to keep you from going down that road. He did. But he made me mad one day. So out of spite, I get up with some people. And they're like, you know, they're doing their shit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, hit me, hit me. Like, they're like, you ever done that? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I've done it. I, I fully lied to their face. I had never actually <laughs> shot right. up before. Um, They're like, all right. I was like, yeah, I just need a little help. I got small veins. <laughs> so they do it. Well, I get back to the house with him. Do you not out? Do you do like, like. Oh, yeah, I was done. Okay. So oh, yeah. you went straight to the pillow for a minute. 
Oh, yeah. No, because I never felt that before. I mean, right. snorting it is fully different than, you know, shooting right. it. Right. So describe that feeling. Describe that feeling of shooting it. Well, I'm just sitting there, and, you know, they do me and shit, and I'm, I don't know. It's like Superman. It just kind of hits right. into you. And it at that time, it was one of the best feelings I'd ever felt. And that's just the honest truth of it. For sure. You know? You hear people say, oh, that's the most horrible. No, it felt good. It felt great. It hit my whole body. I didn't feel sad. I didn't feel pain. Like, it was just so nice. Right. And, of course, after that feeling, you don't want to do it any Who other way. Who doesn't want to feel that way? You know? Yeah, you want to feel that way every minute of your life. It was great. Yeah, because it does melt everything away, doesn't it? It sure did. Pain, stress, anguish. You just feel anxiety. Happy. You just don't care. Yeah, it, it hits those endorphins, yeah. those, those happy yeah. things in your body and your mind, and it was a whole different world at that point. So you've been through all the bases, and now you're now you got the needle. You got the the bug for that too. Yeah, I got it. I had it all. <laughs> and this guy's getting the good dope. Yeah, we were going to Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had a good connect up there, but I get back and he looks at my arm and he's like, what'd you do? And I was just like, oh, fuck you. I did it now. Right. <laughs> and at that point, he's like, well, there ain't nothing I can do now. Like, right. I guess that's how we doing it. I was like, all right. And it just went from there. Like, it was a whole different way of life by that point. Because I'm like, all right. I'm feeling good all the time. I got this good shit. My man's the man. Like, I'm ready to live this fucking life. Right. <laughs> so it just, it went from that point on. So the high of the the drugs is a part of it too, but the lifestyle is part of it too, right? Oh, yeah. It's exciting. Right. But the lifestyle only lasts so long and the high only lasts so long. Well, yeah, then you're chasing it. Mm -hmm. It was a constant chase. Or, you know, as we all know, it's the waiting. You know, you got to get that shit and you're ready. You ain't got right. nothing left and you sit there fucking wait. That part wasn't ever fun. No. But then. The chaos. You know, you get somewhere and you're about to get that shit. You know, you're getting it handed. And it's like everything is good again. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm about to have that. Like, I'm good. Right. And it's, it's, it's so weird, weird because uh, how many times it was you sick or something and waiting. And you're like, definitely sick. But as soon as that call comes in and somebody says they got it, did you feel better right then without even doing the dope? Hell yeah. Instantly, right? Instantly. It's funny how your brain works that way. It, it is definitely crazy because I'd be like, I'd get so excited. My body be all giddy. And I'm like, oh, I'm so ready. Let's go get this good shit. Like, I'm ready to feel good. Start some, my day. I had another one the other day. I can't remember who it was. But she said uh, she'd be throwing up. Oh, yeah. On the way, throwing up, all the kind of stuff. I never went through that. But I do remember instantly feeling better at just knowing that I was going to be better. And even yeah. if it was a two-hour car ride, that two-hour car ride wasn't so bad if I knew it was there. Oh, yeah. We'd be bumping music. Oh, yeah. We'd be singing. You know, right. probably smoke a blunt or something just to get through it and everything. But and as soon as you got there, high. first thing you did is find a place to get high or did it right in the car. Oh, yeah. Right in the fucking car. You get that shit handed right to you, have your shit ready before it even got in the car. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Have your works out. Yeah. Lighter's already going. Oh, yeah. Spoon's I'm already warm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was ready. Uh, so how long did it take for things to crash down? Like, what, what, what made you, what made all that come to a head? Because if he's dealing, he's obviously making money, right? Are you still making money? Uh, well, no. Right. So it got to the point to where the dealing just became to supply your habit? Yeah, I mean, we did our shit. You know, we did our supply, which any good dealer knows not to fucking do. But, it, you know, young and dumb, whatever. We didn't think like that at the point. And it kind of went from, all right, he's making money to it just stopped. We were just going to get some shit. That's just where it went to. Right. And. Because the only thing that matters is feeling well. Yeah. Because we're both at, at the time, me and him were both just assholes. And we were sick. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was never good. So it was a constant, all right, I go to work, come back home with him, and we're off to Baltimore. Let's hurry up and go get this shit. Right. Making money daily? 
Oh, yeah. Right. So, I mean, we still have some people to, you know, get that money off of and right. shit, but... So, you're working and dealing? You had a job? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, you got paid every day from the job? You didn't have to wait for the check? No, I was a server. Okay, right. So, you got tips. I got so, tips. that worked for you to be able to go to the city every day. Oh, yeah. I constantly always have money. Him, he just had money from, like, whatever he got rid of with, you know, his shit. But, I mean... What better way can you do? You know, I'm, I'm getting cash every day. I'm not waiting for shit. I'm ready to go. Like, it's kind of the perfect type of thing, I guess, at that point. Mm -hmm. But it it never ends well, you know. So it kind of just, <clears throat> it went from all that bullshit and just, I guess, spiraled out. And I just kept getting worse and worse. And to the point, like, that's just what my life was. Right. So, like, how was losing? Did you lose weight? Did you not eat? Did you? Oh, yeah. No. Um, so, at that point, I just, I probably looked like a whole different person. Like, my whole face was sunken in. You know, my eyes looked like they were constantly black. And, I mean, I really, I couldn't eat. I was nodded out. <laughs> my head was down. I wasn't even awake right. most of the time to even try to eat, even at work. You know, I was there getting fucking high. Mm -hmm. so, Never had no issues at work, like nodding out or getting called out at work? So, where I worked at the time, I was on night shift and overnights, and there was no manager. And people I worked with all got high. So, I I'd just come by and tap the other one and be like, yo, yo, tighten up. Yeah, pretty much. Right. I mean, there was like one time where I did way too much, and I was like, yo, bro, let me go use your car. Like, I got laid down. So... I had to go sleep some of it off. Yeah, because I was, I was fucked. Like, it was some good shit. Just did just a little bit too much. And I was like, yeah, I can't even serve right now. I can't handle y'all. <laughs> right, I need to just go lay down. Yeah. So that... I mean, it kind of worked out again because everybody was getting high, and we were just like, fuck it, you know? You know, I got you, you got me. And it kind of went like that. So, like I said, it was a perfect situation at that point. Like, my man is a dealer. I'm at a job. Everybody's getting high. So, it kind of worked out. Right, getting money so I can go get more every day. <laughs> yeah. And it, I mean, at that point, of course, it sounded good. And then, other th what about, like, so you're doing the heroin. What about, like, Xanaxes or anything like that? Are you mixing any other kind of pills or... Anything else? I mean, yeah, if we could get like some Dilaudids or right. some Roxy's, we'd mix that in there. Um, you would mix it up. You wouldn't do them separate. We'd do it both ways. I mean, but right, right, right. why not? At that point, you're like, fuck it. Why not? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> Never threw no Coke in there? No, not at that point in time. Okay. So I hadn't really speedballed like that yet. <laughs> right. Yeah, because that's a whole nother level, <laughs> isn't it? I eventually did that. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know if I really, so it was nice because I'd be up, you know, and then I'd be down and I come back up and I'm like, I don't even, but what happens when that's done? You're like, which one's going to run out first? So. Right. It was okay. And with the Coke too, you're just chasing, chasing the dragon the whole time anyways, right? Yeah. So for me, I preferred to do it separately mm -hmm. at that point because I was like, all right, let me do some Coke so I can start my day. Like doing something, cleaning my house or something, right? But then I'm like, all right, bet I'll save this dope for later. So when I'm coming down, I'm not going to feel like shit. And that's how I liked it. At that, I'm like, yeah, we're going to do it like that. I'm going to go clean this fucking house. I'm going to go run some errands. And then I'm going to come chill. I ain't going to feel nothing because I'm about to hit this shit real quick. Like, I'm about to hit this vein and I'm going to be good. Right. It's like, a, it's like switches that you get to hit, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you get to uh, turn this on, turn this off, turn this on, turn this off. Whichever way you want to be set up is designated by whatever dope you want to put in you, right? Yeah. That's pretty much how that was. And that's just, like I said, with mixing them, my body, I don't know what the fuck was coming first, what was ending first. I didn't know how it was going to happen. So I was like, let me separate this and do it on my terms. Or what I thought yeah. was my turn. We used to eat a lot of acid in the 90s, and uh, I would always get a, like 10 volumes to come down off the acid. 
Or when we smoked crack, we would get crack, and I would always want some Valiums. I'd be like, all right, we can get an eight ball, but I got to have at least five Valiums because I hated that come down. I just wanted to turn that switch off and move right on to the next thing. Yes. Yeah, so we would end up, we would we would finish smoking the crack by smoking it on a bong of weed, <laughs> on a bong of weed so that I would be getting stoned on my last two or three crack hits, and then... I would take the Xanax or the those Valiums and just done. <laughs> 20 minutes, I'd be out, bro. I'm done. I'd be high as shit for a couple minutes, and then I'd go to bed, and I didn't care no more about the hundreds and hundreds of dollars I had blew on crack. Exactly. You don't think about it then. Yeah. That, that was the joy of coming down off of shit. Then you ain't got to think about it no more. You done. Yeah, until you're broken, you can't get no more. Well, there's always that. That always comes to light at some point. <laughs> okay. So how many years did you have? So from this point right here, let's, you know, you're shooting heroin. You and this dude are uh, uh, dealing enough to, you know, make a couple of caps or whatever, right? Yeah. Okay. And then it goes to what what happens from there? Does that last for a couple of <laughs> years? Uh, not with him. <laughs> um. So that was maybe like a year with him. And then something happened with that, some bullshit. Um, so I moved on to the next one. That's really kind of how that went. I mm-hmm. still had some, you know, good friends and shit I chilled with. So, you know, I was getting high. I was around everyone else that's getting high. So, I mean, it never really stopped. It just kind of stopped with him. But... I went back to making my money and still doing the same shit. Right. Just different people in your life. Yeah. I just, I did what I had to do. So, I mean, yeah, it just, it kept going and going and you're always meeting someone new and that's usually how it was for me. I met a guy every time right. <laughs> if I meet someone and. um, So, yeah, I imagine they're probably flirting with you anyways when you're going down in there. You know, you're going down into Baltimore, right? Are you the one going down and copping the dope yourself? I wasn't by myself, no. Right. <clears throat> so. Yeah, like a be more connect or did you just go yeah. into the streets? Okay, so somebody you was calling that was going to meet you up there. Yeah, so right. at that point, I did not drive. So I always had to have somebody anyway. I mean, I drove people's vehicles, their cars and shit, but I did not have a license or my own car. So I had to have somebody and if I got to connect... Of course, they're going to be like, yeah, let's take the car. Like, I got you. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'll cut you out some. Right, for sure. But I mean. Warming up too much. Oh, you're fine. There was, I had a couple connects down there, you know, from like the previous relationship. Um, And then, of course, if it did come down to that and somebody don't come through, well, you you already know you can go right on the street. Which I think we did a couple times, but I never really had to do it like that. Because most of the time, my people did come through. But I think there was maybe three times out of the whole time I was getting high that we ended up actually going on the street to be like, yeah, you got me. Like, you got anything? Right. And how'd that go? that go well? Yeah. <laughs> we met another connect by then. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean. Never, I never got ripped off, though? Anything like that? From doing that? Yeah, because I feel like there's always a couple times you're going to have to chalk it up to the game, right? <laughs> From doing that, no. But have I been ripped off? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh like yeah. Fronting people's stuff too when he was dealing. Yeah. Yeah, that's never a good idea, is it? Front of dope had some dope. Absolutely fucking not. Um <laughs> but even then, like it, you know, when you're in that life, you're a whole different person. Yeah. So it could have been someone that I was, you know, real, real close with that still would have done it because you ain't in the right state of mind. Like you're not mm-hmm. thinking about, yo, that's like my sister, da 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 da. You're just like, yo, I'm trying to like have some extra shit for me. So let me rip her off real quick. Right. And I get that now. Of course, at the time, I'm ready to fight you. <laughs> like, you just ripped me off. Like, that's my money. That's my shit. Yeah. So I definitely have been ripped off. I had to learn real quick, like, don't ever hand that money over till you have your shit and you check it. Right. Not um, just because they handed you some package. Yeah. So I had that issue for a while where I didn't think about that because I would get too excited to get the shit and then something wouldn't be right. You know, it would be some fucking, I think someone gave me cereal once. Mm. Yeah. And it was someone I was really close with. They were still in the car though. So 
I told my guy, I was like, yeah, stop this fucking car right now. And my boy's like, what's wrong, guys? What's wrong? I'm like, bro, you just me some fucking cereal. You better take your ass back to that house and go get my shit. And he's like, oh, oh. And I'm like, uh-uh. I said, look, you like a brother to me, but I will fuck you up right now. Right. Like, I'm not playing. And he went back. He goes in the bag. It's like 30 seconds later, he comes out. I said, you know that shit was in his pocket the whole time, right? I said, I know. He did not just get it. He knocked on the door and asked to go to the bathroom. He, he went right around the back. Hmm. Literally right in the fucking backyard. Like, didn't even go through the front, nothing. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, that shit was in his fucking pocket. And you're oblivious to doing dumb shit like that, too. <laughs> He'll come around there and tell you a hundred times, no, 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 no. Because, again, like you're in that state of mind, like you was talking earlier. You're just not, you can't no. think right. No. And you don't care. Well, why should you? Right. I'm worried about me, myself, and I, yeah. and me getting well. And, I mean, I got it that, at that point. But... I mean, you're still going to be mad about it. Right. Like, yeah, I understand because I've robbed plenty of people, too. I get it. But we still can't let this fly. Like, this still can't happen. Yeah. I was never much on ripping people off. I just never thought that was a cool thing to do. Uh, I had a buddy that was young, and he would rip people off left and right. Like, And I skimped a few bags when I was young, so on a little weed, of course, I'd take me a little bud yeah. or something. But as far as, like, just taking that 50 bucks and just not coming back type shit, I always thought that was cruddy. It is. You know what I mean? I just didn't want that put on me to be somebody. And he would get chased and beat up. Like, we'd be walking through town. Somebody would get out of a car and have to chase him. And he'd run and, you know, almost get beat up. Like, I've seen it happen several times when I was very young. So I was like, yeah, that's not for me. It's I'm not trying to do that to people and then have to run for my life all the time. Yeah, that part's never Or fun. fight. Like, if you're going <laughs> to fight him, you might as well just take it from the get-go, right? Just big I boy mean, that yeah. shit. You might as fucking well. <laughs> My thing, I think it was, I just cut shit a lot. Like, I'd have to take a little extra out there bag. Mm -hmm. I'd cut it with, I think we'd, B12 was definitely a thing. <laughs> um, Some shit like that. But. And the longer you had that bag, the more it got cut. Well, yeah. And then, then, my part. then what would, yeah, right. So then what would suck is then, then you're looking at your cut bag going, damn, this is all I got left. You know, you got to sell it because if you use it, it's all cut. Yeah, exactly. You're putting yourself in a bind, ain't you? I did a couple times, yeah. but I mean, some of the shit I had was so good, it didn't even matter that it was cut. Right. You know, I was like, all right, let me cut this. I don't want no one. And that was what I told myself. I don't want no one to die, so I got to cut it. That is what I told myself to feel better. So, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> yeah, but come on, man. When you're dealing dope, that's what you're supposed to do. Well, like, is. everybody knows you're gonna, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what's going to happen. And the further down the chain it gets, the worse it's going to get because everybody's trying to profit. Well, yeah, you got to still make your money, still get your own shit. Right. Like, it's, you got to figure it out and you do what you got to do at that point. And I mean, at the same time, if I cut your shit and you still coming back to me every time, clearly something right. is still OK. I mean, that's right. how you think about it. You're like, well, you still coming to me, so it can't yeah. be that fucking bad. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard knock life, ain't it? <laughs> I don't even like her dope, but I'm going back to get some. <laughs> You know, it's definitely terrible. Yeah, it is. It's it's a revolving circle. Like, we all know that. We just keep going through that door, and that's just how it goes. And we it's do just what for we the, do. It's just for the feel good. That's all it is. It's just for that feel good that you search for and search for it all through life, right? I think we go yeah. through all of our life searching for shit that makes us feel good. I mean, why not? Who wants to feel like shit? That's, and that's, I felt that. Pretty much my whole life, I was like, I'm tired of feeling like this. I don't want to feel sad or mad or anything anymore. Like, I want to feel good. I want to smile like all these other people and this and that. So, I mean, it's kind of hard not to, I guess, you know. And shit like that runs in my family as well. You know, being an addict, it's definitely runs in my family. So, I was pretty much told, well, you was bound to do this anyway. I'm like, all right, fuck right it. Right on. Might as well keep doing it, right? Right on. So I guess with that too, man, that would make me ask about your dad because I knew your dad. You did. I did. We grew up. We went to school together. I have a really crazy story about him when we were like 15 years old, 15 or 16. Yeah. Let's yeah. So, so, okay. So uh, we lived on this trailer back in Brucetown. It was so far back in the woods, it was called Forgotten Lane. And it's up on top of this mountain, and you got to go up these big old hills and shit. So anyways, we're there partying, and it's me and Joey and your dad's Rocky. And then I think Wawa's there, and then there's this chick, Jamie, there. And 
she's leaving and we're drunk as piss. We've been partying all night. Everybody's drunk as piss. And she's getting ready. To, and Mike's there, too. We're all drunk. And then she's getting ready to leave. But Mike doesn't have a license and Rocky doesn't have a license. But Rocky, <laughs> he talks her into letting him drive. So they leave. Mike's in the back. He's got his 12-pack of beer. Rocky's driving. Jamie's in the front seat. They're going down this old gravel road, and they smash into a tree. Okay? Yeah. Doing, like, whatever, 60 mile an hour or some shit. We don't know nothing about this. We're in the trailer sleeping. Well, two, three hours goes by that we're sleeping. They got He's got to walk back about a mile and a half to the house. He beats on the door. We open the door. It's like a scene from Freddy Krueger. Okay, his whole head, he's got blonde, blonde hair, and it's all bloody, and it's hanging in his face, and there's pieces of glass just hanging out of his face. He stumbles in the door, lays down on Joey's, lays down on the couch, and lays his head on Joey's lap on a towel, and Joey starts picking glass out of his head. And we're like, where's everybody else? You know, where's Jamie? Where's Mike? I don't know. I don't know. So... We don't have a license. We have a car and all this shit, but we don't want to go down there because we're scared the cops are going to be there. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we don't go. <laughs> Next morning, about 7 o'clock comes, and uh, Rocky wants to go to the hospital. He said, I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm telling him I fell through a plate glass window. So we take him and drop him off the hospital. So when he gets to the hospital, they open the curtain up between them, and there's Jamie beside him. Okay? So what had happened when they hit the tree, Mike took off running. And robbed Jamie of her $250 paycheck she had just got that day. Oh, fuck. Robbed her $250 paycheck, took his beer, and left. Uh, Rocky walked to our house, and we ended up with him in the hospital. Well, she ended up crawling to a house that was like, I don't know, 250 yards away or something. And crawled up on the porch and knocked on the door. The people turned on the porch light, and they were scared to death because she was all bloody. Uh, called the ambulance, ambulance come and got her, said if she would have been there like 10 more minutes, she would have died. Scars across her forehead where she went through the windshield, fucked her up really bad. So she had told the cops that all this stuff had happened and, you know, that Rocky was the one that did it. And then he's saying he fell through the plate glass window. So as soon as that curtain opens, boom, they put the cuffs on him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know what, man? I honestly think that might have been the last time I saw Rocky. I really do, because I was trying to think about it earlier, and I don't think I saw him again after that. And we were young. But before that, we hung out pretty tough. He had a little apartment over there uh, by where Trex is now. And the same little scumbag I was talking about used to rip everybody off, would go over there and wash his dishes and clean his house for bong hits. And your oh, dad would give him bong hits to clean the house. He'd go in there wash them dishes. He'd come and ask for a bong hit. He'd be like, go back in the steps. And we'd just be sitting there smoking the whole time laughing at him. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, that was a crazy night, uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, I've heard definitely some crazy stories about my dad. My mom tells me she likes the one of him coming home drunk fighting the tree. The tree one, by the way. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> there's uh, he was a partier, that's for sure. Right. Um. Yeah. Um, of course, been told like you're definitely your daddy's kid, most definitely. Um. Obviously, I partied, <clears throat> but I mean, see him passing. That was on it. That was the uh the bad path what really led me down the big path of addiction you know i had of course drank i smoked i had done some pills before that but it wasn't you know it was like a weekend thing whatever i'd party and shit but after that a bowl was put in my mouth i got told the news they're like look honey i gotta tell you something and i'm like what's up they're like your dad passed and i'm like the fuck are you talking about I'm 13 years old, like, what the fuck? Like, don't know what's going on. And I'm like, why are you lying? Like, why would you even say that to me? And I just remember blacking out. And then I just came to and everybody's, like, kind of crowding me. They're like, it's okay, it's okay. I get up. Like, my grandma and aunt was there and shit. My mom's had them leave. Whatever. There's just a couple people there. And they're like, look. We're going to get through this, da-da-da-da-da. Here's a cigarette. Here's a bowl. It'll calm you down. 
I'm like, all right, just give me that shit. <clears throat> and it just went from there. It's kind of where it started, huh? I was just so tired of being sad. I was so tired of crying and being mad at him. I just didn't want to feel that anymore. You know, I'd go to school and look around and you see everyone happy and smiling. And I'm like, why can't I be like that? Like, so I was like, all right, you know, fuck this. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to do this on my own terms. Like, fuck the therapy. Fuck the bullshit. This is what I want to do. And I got in with the people that I felt like I fit in with. They was happy. They was partying. I was like, all right. And they accept me for me. And it just went on from there. I was trying everything. Whatever was put in front of me, it didn't really matter at that point. I'm going to parties. You know, I'm getting <laughs> fucked up. And for me, I mean, for someone going through so much shit, you're like, you know, that's the life. Like, I get to party with older people. I got all these friends. I'm getting fucked up. I'm feeling good right now. So why not keep it going at that point? I don't have to think about my dad not being here. I don't have to think about nothing else except where's the next party at? And it just kept going downhill from there. I think that's why they say youth is wasted on the young. Because our bodies yeah. are in such great shapes, but our minds are so fucked. It was. I mean, it's. I just been through so much already at that point in life, even before he had passed. Like I had just. I had a good and a bad childhood, you know, mm -hmm. there was ups and downs like everyone, but I had a lot of downs on things that I shouldn't have had to go through. But I did. It's and, interesting because Wes said that he thinks that trauma is more like a gateway. It you know, is. People call weed a gateway drug and things like that. It's more like trauma. And you just solidified that point. I mean, it's I fully believe that. I mean, when you just from like, you know, three years old on going through some shit. And then one of the people that you love most in this whole world is gone. Like that was that last straw for me. Right. I was like, I'm I'm tired of feeling this way. I'm just tired of it. And my dad was the last straw. I was done. I was like, I'm going fucking head first into this shit. And then we're just weekends. Then we're just a little bit of party. Like I'm going fucking head first. Like trauma is a hard fucking thing. And some people can deal with it. You know, therapy and shit like that. And some of us choose the easier but eventually harder path. Right. And I mean, it happened. I fucked up. I did a lot of shit. Okay. But I mean, I also got myself out of that. So, yeah, so let's talk about that. What what did it take to do that? Like, what was the what was the final straw for <clears throat> making you go uh, <laughs> away from the drug dealers? I, well, I was locked up. I kept getting locked up. Okay, how many times have you been locked up? Like four times. Okay. Um, it was the last time. So what was the first time like? Talk about the first time you went into jail. What'd you get locked up for? The first time they took you in and booked you? Out of possession. Okay. I got out. My first and only um, getting out with no bond bullshit or even having a bond. Um, and I get out and 10 days later, I had sold some shit because I didn't stop after that. Um, another guy I was with at the time was locked up. I was like, oh, I got to get money for his books and I still got to get good. So I was still selling and I got set up. So. So you're locked up twice within 10 days. Yep. And ended up getting a distro. <clears throat> it's the first time I've ever been in trouble besides that possession, which, you know, they ran everything concurrent and all that. They gave me 13 years, all suspended, but. Oh, God. I did over a year in there. Okay, so you had to stay inside for a year. How much was you dealing for 13 years? How much they... They caught me with a gram of dope. A gram. That's fucked up. That's it. And it was cut, by the way. Cut to fucking pieces. And it, and it was split up or is all one gram together? No, it was in two bags. Okay. Two small... It's a gram, so it's two small bags. You know, it's not a lot. Um, 
And I was like, this is some bullshit. But it still went for distro. Why? Because it's two bags or because of the quantity? Because I got set up. Oh, because see, I was telling Durr. Um, okay, so they taped you saying that they, you were selling. Yep. Uh, right, so, yeah, it's kind of hard to turn that one off a of distro when they have you recorded. Oh, yeah, there's a video, audio, all of it. Hmm. Um, of course, I mean, whatever. Okay, so you sit in there for a year. Where do you do your time at? Here at NRA DC. Okay. Because um, the way that when I got sentenced, one, I had to wait up until the last like month or two of me being in there before I actually got sentenced. So I sat in there the whole time pretty much waiting to know how long I was getting in. Right. And I'm like, what the fuck? And nobody would bond me out. Oh, you had a bond that way would get you. It was a twenty thousand plus dollar bond. Now I wasn't actually supposed to get one. And my mom went in and talked to them. So Let's go with this. Uh, uh, my mom wanted me to get clean. And she, I was using her phone. And I didn't know how to look, get logged out of my messenger. Mm. So my mom went to the cops. She did. They got someone to set me up. And, you know, obviously now at this point in time in life, I'm like, look. She was scared to watch me die. She was watching me kill myself. Uh, me and my mom are very close now. But at that point in time, I was very fucking, I was ready to rip her head off. Of course. Um, How did I'm you like, find all that out? She told me at the very end. The Because I'm sitting here like, I know who fucking snitched on me. Like, I know the snitch. I didn't know my mom had anything to do with it. Right. But I knew who the snitch was right off bat. Um, but I find this out. Um, she had went to them. And they weren't going to give me a bond. She's like, no, give it to her. Because I want her to know that she's sitting in there and can't get out. Because she told everyone not to bond not my to ass out. Um, it's like, you know, two grand to get me out. And I begged her. I fucking begged her. Just get me the fuck out of here. Like, fuck this. Well, you saved your life. Well, yeah, because no one would get my ass out. So <laughs> it definitely, it saved me for that time. But I got out and... Not even a month later, I was getting high again. So after doing 12 months, and you got 12 years over your head, right? Yeah. And you get right back to it. Yep. Like, wow, what did you not change? What did you get right back to the same people? To... Yeah, well, I thought I had it. I did drug pod. I had done IWF, and I'm like, I got this shit. Like, I'm really trying to do good. I don't want to go back to that life. And then and that was your mindset, though, that you didn't want to do yes, that, right? It fully was like when I first got in there, like, yeah, I did some shit. You know, you got your fucking druggy buggy come in and you make cocktails out that shit. You know, it's great. So I got high for a little bit when I was in there. And then towards the end, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna chill out. Like, I really need to get my head right. And I did. And I got out and I started hanging out with people. It was was it this time so it was a girl I had met in jail and I got out she was already out and we linked up and it was good at first like she she had the same mindset y'all were gonna stay clean yeah we were fine and then I go over one day and she's got fucking coke laid out mm. and I'm like oh what's that she's like oh so coke you want some and I was like no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, she's kind of staring me in my face. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I've been doing good for this long. I was locked up. Like, what's a little bit right? Well, that's the famous fucking last word. Just I one deserve time. It. <laughs> yeah, I deserve it. I want to celebrate being straight for so long is a terrible <laughs> thing, right? Yes. And it went from there. We were just doing some coke. And then she ends up getting dope. Probably that night. <laughs> and it was done. I ended up moving in with her. Ended up meeting the guy I was engaged to at that time. Um, and it got bad. So you're on probation for this too, oh, right? Oh, fucking right. So yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, this, this can't go on too long. Because if I, are they piss I, testing what? you, you're obviously... They piss tested me... So at first it was like every other week 
Um, Cause he's like, you really seem serious. And I was, I really was when I got out. I really was. But it went from that to, hey, just coming in a couple months. This is your date. And I'm like, oh, okay. Right. Got a couple months to do shit. And then I just stop for, you know, I just withdraw for a few days and I'd be good. And there's a couple times though, or like one or two times I went in, they didn't even test me. Makes you feel a little bit more secure too. You know what so I mean? So when you and you were you clean for those times? Like you go in there all clean and you're like, oh shit, I went through withdrawals and all that and they didn't even test me. Well, yeah. Yeah, I've done that. And I'm like, well, fuck, I could have done this. So of course I leave and I start doing it again. As soon as you leave. Hell yeah. I would, I would be ready. But it just, <clears throat> the second time of me being locked up was actually because the girl I was staying with, she snitched on me next. God. She kept calling my PL. Apparently she had called multiple times. So we had an issue. I called her out because I was giving her money for the bills. And I was pretty much paying all the bills. And I see a notice in the mail. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I open this shit. She hasn't paid nothing. She's been taking my money. So, of course, I go into the room. I'm like, yeah, bitch, where's my money at? Like, why are the bills not paid? Oh, that, I was like, nah, bitch, you spending my money on fucking crack right. instead of on these fucking bills. I said, so I'm paying bills, supporting all y'all's fucking habits, making sure this house is clean and doing it all. And she gives mad. She's like, fuck this. I'm moving out. Bitch, move. I've been paying your bills anyway. Well, we had to move too. And I find out later she done snitched on my ass because she was fucking mad. She's like, oh, she's getting high. You need to go check on her. She's done called multiple times. So they finally did it. So my ass goes right back in. It was just. It on was a violation. Crazy. No new charge or anything. No new charge. Right. I didn't have no shit on me. When um the probation office showed up, so wouldn't really. Right, all they could do is get you for your dirty urine, which is just a violation. So what they give yes. you for the violation? I did for my first one. I think I did a little over six months. Damn, that's a hit. Yeah, that's a hit for the first one. Now it's only like fourteen days or something. First oh, violation. Oh no, your first one's seven now. Okay. I never got. The, I never got the um little week and right. one month and all that bullshit they always hit you right in the head yeah and i was in charge probably well i sit there and look at other people i'm like well why do you have less time than me if we have the same shit and you have worse charges than me and i'm sitting here like what the fuck <laughs> like i feel like y'all hit me yeah. and yeah it's all about the lawyers and the money yeah i had pro bono yeah so yeah. But, yeah, I never had no money when i was young and the lawyers always seemed to fuck me over it was just about piling felonies on me Oh, yeah. yeah. Every time. But, I mean, I was going to keep doing what I was going to do. So, I mean, that just wasn't going to change. And I tried. I really did at that point. Like, I really did want to do better. I was tired of being locked up. I was like, this place fucking stinks. It sucks being here. You're right. got to deal with all these people that I don't want to be around. Yes. And as we all know, females and females do not get along very well. Mm-hmm. Um, we're catty. We're mm -hmm. fucking females can be very catty, very conniving, very sneaky. Like I can fully admit that shit. Now I try to keep my head down. Like I was good with everybody for the most part. Um, but I kept my head down. I was like, yeah, I don't want to bullshit. Right, but when you take thirty women like that and put all of you in a, oh, it's hard in a spot together, right? Well, yeah, and. Especially when you come in off of shit. When you getting in there and you coming off of shit, I get real paranoid. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, everybody's talking about me. I see you bitches staring at me. Y'all fucking plotting right now. <laughs> He's so paranoid on all this shit. So funny story. You know, I love Erica. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fucking love Erica. I hated her when I first met her. We met in jail. Okay. <laughs> and... She, to me, and she will tell you this, was a Bible thumper. And I'm like, yeah, she she in here is being all about God. And, you know, I, I'm a godly person. But in here, she she being real extra. Like, mm -hmm. you was not allowed to cuss around her. You could not talk about certain things. I'm like, I cannot stand this bitch. And it just, it was not a good thing at that point. And I'm like, yeah, this just, I got to stay away from her. I was drying out my drawers one day, okay? <laughs> And she comes over, she said, 
why you got those on the chair? Like, not everybody wants to see that. I said, bitch, I don't give a fuck what y'all want to see. Like, do something. And she, you know, I was just, I was not in the right place at that point. I'm like, yo, don't fuck with me. And I didn't want no one to think I was, you know, I'm not going to be your bitch. Like, that's right. not a thing. So I had to show some authority. That's how I felt at the time. For real, NRADC is not that fucking bad. But, you know, I'm like, nobody about to punk me. Well, I get out. She's out and shit. We both end up back in. So I meet her for this second fucking time. I'm going, or whatever time I'm in there. And she's a whole different person. And I'm like, where's the Erica that I fucking met? She's like, look. She said, I don't know what the fuck I was doing at that point. She said, and she's still coming down off of shit at this fucking point. But she was just so different. And I ended up just loving her. Like, we ended up getting real close the second time we were in jail together. Um, and I, she was just ended up being so amazing. Like, she wasn't, like, she ended up just being a normal person. Right. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, sometimes we do act different when we in there. She so was trying some different shit. She, she was, was trying some God shit. It, it wasn't for me. It wasn't working. <laughs> It was, not, it was not my cup of tea. It was too much for me. Um, <laughs> I can be very loud and outspoken, which I've worked on now. Um, right. um, but she mentioned being the same way. She ended up just being awesome. Right. Like She helped me through a lot of shit when I was in there that, at that point. Um, because she ended up being just like me. You know, We were just trying to make it through. And she would tell me about her kids, who I fucking adore now. Um and I don't, she was just great. I think we were in, I'm pretty sure we were in drug pod together. Right. And um, she would help me do my stuff and we would just sit there and talk. You know, we talk about the outside and all this shit. And I think that it was at that point that she, I think, got drug court. I'm pretty, yeah, she got drug court at that point. And she was like one of the only ones to complete that shit too, right? I completed that shit. Okay. How many people do you know that's completed it? Completed it or completed it and still doing good? Well, I guess both. <laughs> no, <that's bad. laughs> There's a difference. Again, honesty comes out sometimes. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, there, there's actually a good bit now. That's actually more than just a couple. Okay, because at one point I knew it was only like two or three people it that was. had ever even done it. Yeah, it was. Because it's very intensive. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, God. It was the hardest thing, which is actually why I'm still clean, though, is because of drug court. But um, like now I still know. Um, so the guy I'm with now, he actually just completed drug court back in October. Um, he We're obviously still doing very well. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people from when he was in it did graduate and are still doing very well. So that's a great thing. I like I love hearing that. Hey, these people are still clean. They're still, you know, living their life in a recovery way back when I was in it, it was not as much. Um, right. So it's, it's doing better at this point. You feel like being with someone that's recently clean to makes you stronger together. Or do you, do you feel like that's a weak, like one of you could be a weak link? You know what I mean? Um, Cause one of you could feed the other one pretty easily or not. It goes both ways. Right. So, I mean, I do have more, a little bit more clean time than him, but he's at shit. Two years now, I'm at four. I think it just depends on the people because one thing I really looked at was where his mindset was. And we we waited a year before we made anything official because I was like, you're still trying to figure you out. I'm still, you know, kind of getting my life together after drug court. Like I'm still, you know, living for me. Um, And it was something I looked at a lot was like, well, is your mind at I'm gonna fake it till I make it, or is it I want a future? And it's something that we talked about a lot, and we still do. I've sat down and had the talks with him of, hey, we're both in recovery. Like we have to talk about this. If I'm feeling some type of way, I want to be able to come to you, right? And vice versa, which we have done. We've sat and had really long talks about that type of shit of where we're at, being supportive of each other. Well, yeah, because I think you have to be when you're both in recovery. You know, I've done those relationships where one of us was in recovery and the other wasn't. And let me tell you, it doesn't never it's no. never turned out good. No. The other person always falls. And it's always been like that. So, I mean, I am 
I'm the type of person, I did a lot of therapy. So well, something she had told me, my therapist had told me it was do check-ins. So I do like a weekly check-in, which I know is probably annoying sometimes, but I, I like to know, you know, hey, where are we at? You know, in our relationship, you know, how, how do you feel like you're doing in recovery? You know, this is how I'm doing. I might've struggled with something this week, but I feel like it kind of makes us stronger. And it was something his uh, family actually had said to me, she was like, um, his sister was like, I didn't even know when y'all first got together that you were in recovery, that you knew what he had went through with drug court, with drugs. And I was like, yeah, I got four years clean. She's like, you have no idea how happy that makes me. She said, because you've helped make him stronger because you understand what he's going through. Right. Like, I see that y'all actually talk, y'all communicate. And she's like, you know, it's it's a great thing. Because the other thing is, sometimes it's hard to be with someone that doesn't understand. Right. But at the same time, too, y'all both went through the same program. So your knowledge is based in the same area. You know what I'm saying? Like what you were taught as far as that is similar, if not the same, yes. so that you can relate on that level. Someone that doesn't have that information or that education is going to make it harder for them. Right. They do. As someone that has never really been through that hasn't been through addiction, you can't understand what I'm truly going through in my head. Right. And at the same time, he can't understand what I'm going through fully because you're not me. Mm -hmm. We have different emotions. We have different ways, you know, we might handle shit, but at least like, you know, I, I know how to talk to him. He knows how to talk to me because we do understand that we've been together for a while now, you know, again, yeah, we went through the same program. So we did learn those same things. It just makes it, it's easier for us to be able to talk to each other when we are struggling because you don't feel that judgment. You know, it's someone that being able to understand and being able to communicate. It's big. I'm right, big on that. I'm very, very big on communication. Um, it's a key thing for me because I um I got clean and I realized, holy fuck, I got a lot of emotions. Um, I am an emotional ass person. Um, I'm also a cancer, so that should tell you a little bit too. Um <laughs> You know, getting high, I didn't really have that. And now I'm like, oh, I do. So I have to be able to talk about things and communicate and do all that. And, and set expectations too, right? It's not oh, always yeah. just how I feel and how this is. It's sometimes it's here's what you did and here's how it affected me. Oh, I do that a lot. <laughs> right. So. And it's not necessarily blaming. It's saying here's how it affected me. Here's how I felt yeah. when you did that. I, here's I'm taking responsibility for how I felt, but this is what you did. Yeah, he knows. This is how you let me down, or this is how you didn't prioritize yes. me. And I'm I'm big on that. Again, I know he probably gets annoyed sometimes because I can be a little crazy sometimes. I can be extra, but I mean you're a female. Look, I fully <laughs> I fully take that. Okay, fully no, everybody on the planet's crazy, man. <laughs> Chicks just got a different crazy. Guy crazy and chick crazy is just a little different crazy. Well, yeah, but I mean. I'm happy to say I have not thrown nothing at his head and I have not thrown no hits. So these things are important. And you know what I mean? That's a great yeah, thing. These things are important. <laughs> but I mean, it is, it's a great recovery relationship. Like I love our relationship. I love that we are both in recovery. Our communication is great at this point. Like we have a family together now. I have a daughter. He has a son, um, you know, and his son, that is my son. Like that is my baby. Mm -hmm. I love him. My daughter calls him dad. Like we have, an amazing family together, an amazing relationship. And our kids, you know, it makes us that much stronger together. Like we have the recovery together. You know, we understand what it's like having kids because I've been with people that don't have kids. And it's so hard because they're like, why is your kid always got to be around? Bro, that's my fucking kid. What do you mean? <laughs> like my kid's not going nowhere. That's priority. You will never be number one. Right, right. Absolutely. And he knows that too. Um, so that's kind of purpose. Your family's like the purpose of what you, you know what I mean? You're getting up oh, every yeah. day and that's why you're working and going on. You never told me really like what, what was the final straw? What was the final straw that made you say, I can't do this no more? Well, uh, the last time I went in, I ended up getting caught with, did I get caught? Oh, shit. I overdosed is what happened. And they were trying to hit me with like four years <laughs> Two for a violation and two because there was shit in my system. At that point, the law had not changed yet. Oh, okay. Um, and if, you know, if you overdose and they come, 
And now if you have shit on you or whatever, you do not get charged for that now. So back then it was possession. Yes. Just for being in your blood. Yes. Okay. Um, so I was getting hit with that too. And they were trying to hit me four years and I'm like, I'm not doing fucking four years. So then I got offered drug court and it was that overdose. You know, I had overdosed before, but this time it was different. Um, I overdosed in my best friend's bathroom. My fiance at the time was there. Um, I was done. When I opened my eyes from total fucking darkness, there was no light on the other side for me. It was total darkness. Um, I opened my eyes. My mom was there. They had called my mother because they didn't know what the fuck to do with me. Um, I see the EMTs. I've got cops there. I've got my best friend. I've got my man there. But I have my mom there. And she's just crying. I'd been hit four times with Narcan. And when you come out of that darkness to hear nothing but screams and crying, especially from, you know, a mom or just someone you just, that's a big part of your life, it's hard. Um, It killed me. And I just didn't know it. I didn't know what to do at that point. I was like, this is hard. And obviously, like, I got locked up. They didn't lock me up right then and there. Um, I got a violation, of course, like my PO knew. And I went right in. I took myself right into probation. It was a Friday night. So the weekend they were closed. I went on on Monday. And I was like, look, I already know you now. And he did. Mm-hmm. Um. For months and months, that night replayed in my head, especially being in jail. I had to sit there with my thoughts. You know, phase one fucking sucks. And yeah. you, you locked in that cell for majority of the entire day. It's like 21, 22 hours a day. And I had to replay that shit in my head. And I couldn't fucking, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I was like, I don't want to ever have to go through that again. Like, I just watched all these people around me fucking crying. All the people I love and care about. And I was like, I'm done. So I got offered drug court eventually. I took that shit. And then at first I was like getting in it. It was, you know, hey, I just want to get the fuck out of here. Um, It, it was. I was like, so, I'm, so before you get into that too, so drug court is what? How long is it? If you can summarize what's entailed in drug court. Drug court is supposed to be an 18 month program and it pretty much, it's a rehab, but it teaches you, but you're still on the outside. So you're okay. not locked down. So it's an outpatient rehab Yes. for 18 pretty, months. Yes. It teaches you how to live on the outside clean. Um, You have classes, therapy, you can get a peer. You have a. You have all these different things you have to do. But it's a scheduled thing where you're oh, doing yes. several meetings a day, checking in. Definitely check ins. You have a curfew. Okay. Um, you do get in trouble if you do not call curfew on time. There's no one minute after. There's no thirty seconds after. It's on time. So I mean, it's a very very strict program. And at the beginning, there's just so much you have to do. You're testing, I think, three times a week. Your drug testing, you've got two, three plus classes a week. You've got to do meetings. You go to court once a week, every Tuesday. It's very strict. And you're going in front of the judge for an update. And they're like, this is what they've done this week. Yeah. So everybody in the program every week. So it's not everybody. So it's by phase. There's five phases. Phase one, I think phase two is every single week. Then it goes to every other week. Then it's like once a week or once a month. So it kind of goes from there. So like each time you phase up, you get a little bit more freedom. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how they. Need a little bit more rope to hang yourself or not. Yes. And they sure do. It, it's just very strict. Like going through it is. But this, do you think so? So what I hear the most out of it is there's structure. There's yes. There's absolutes. There's consequences for not following the rules yeah so if you do that for 18 months like do you feel like that's what sets you up for the success is because you started being like 
18 months, you have to call it exactly curfew, right? Mm-hmm. Every fucking day. Yes. That's that's a lot of structure. That's a lot. That takes discipline. It sets you up for life. I mean, it sets you up for learning how to be out here, but still be clean and know that you can do that because it's so much structure. Like, I didn't have any of that when I got into it. I didn't know how to fucking do anything. They taught me, like, pretty much how to be an adult is the mm-hmm. best way to put that. Mm-hmm. Um, they teach you a lot. And it is a lot of structure, which I think a lot of us need. Even if you're not an addict, some of us still need that shit, you know? Dan made a good point on his podcast where he said uh, some addicts don't even know how to brush their teeth and take a shower and change their clothes on a regular basis. Yeah. And you expect them to go through life and work a job and drive a car and be responsible. So, yeah. like, the first thing you got to teach them is those things. So, yeah, teaching yeah. someone that, you know, doesn't know how to do those simple things, how to live life, it takes a little while. It's not something you can do in a 30-day program. Fuck or, no. Nope. Um, I think the rehabs can be great and all, but 30 days, you just went through 10 plus years of being an addict and you want them to be better in 30 days. It's just a detox is you know? basically all that is. But even 18 months sounds like it's not a lot, but it it gets you ready to be on your own. Sounds like a whole lot when you're thinking about jail time or that. So oh, you were yeah. looking at four years in jail or you can complete months. this 18 months on the street. You complete this program, you never have to go back in. Got off papers. Oh, yeah. So, of course, I took that. Yeah. Like, But it it helped me. You know, I got my license for the first time in my entire life while I was in drug court. Because of the structure and the discipline. They helped me through it. They helped me with a lot of things like getting ins- health insurance. They taught me how to just do so much and be that adult person and know, hey, you can do all this without the bullshit. Um, and yeah, it was hard. Holy, I mean, some days was not the best. I definitely got in trouble a few times. I was, because I think I did 20 or 21 months in drug court. Oh, uh, okay. So they back you up a phase. You got to do something over again or something. Yeah. So they'll hold you back if you mess up. Which isn't as bad as going to jail though, right? No, no. I mean, they send you to jail sometimes. If really? It's, if, oh, yeah, that'll be your punishment. If you keep fucking up and keep fucking up, they'll send you for a day or send you for a week. I got sent for a week. No shit. Like, here's a little reminder, motherfucker. Here's how these cold walls feel. Well, yeah, because I, I ended up getting a false positive, but I had just gotten in the program. So it did not look good on me that I have a fucking t- a test coming positive for mm-hmm. fucking dope. And mm-hmm. they know that's my drug of choice. Well, it ended up, I was like, send that shit to the lab. And I, I got mad because they're like, just admit it, just admit it. And I'm like, I'm not going to admit to somebody I didn't fucking do. I said, do. fuck all of you. Send me to fucking jail. Because when that test comes back, I want a fucking apology, which, by the way, I never got. Hmm. Um, I didn't like that part, but it came back. It was a false positive. I did not get high. And I laughed, though. I laughed at everyone because everyone in this program is like, oh, she she did it. She did it. She did it. But I look back now and I'm like, well, I probably would have thought the same thing. Right. Like someone just getting in this program, they done got a positive test. I can't even be mad yeah. now. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Exactly. So that was the only time they sent me to jail, though. <laughs> the rest was like community service. Mm-hmm. You can go work at the landfill, go to CCAP, things like that for a punishment. Um, house arrest, that was a big one. I was on house arrest a couple times. Hmm. So I think that's good, though, because uh, instead of just being like, you know, one strike, you're out. Yeah, they they do give you chances. I will fully say that they they want to see you succeed. Right. Well, there has to be an understanding that it's not a, it's not a snap of the fingers and you're done. Exactly. It, it, this is a growth thing. You have to grow into this. You have to be taught how to do this. And I think for so yep. long, we've just expected to be able to turn addiction off so simply. And it just doesn't work that way. People think you just stop you and using the dope, then you're not a dope addict anymore. It doesn't change your behaviors. No, it don't work like that. Take the dope out of the dope addict. He's still a dope addict. He has to change his behaviors to, to act differently. I think it's just, it's something you have to really, you have to learn how to do it. You have to learn to do your life over, but you have to have that willingness to do it. Like we can't just, it'd be nice if we could just turn off shit like that. But that's not how life works. And we think it does is because we were able to turn off our emotions like we were talking earlier with those drugs. 
turn on this switch and go fast, turn on this switch and slow down, turn on this yeah. switch and be happy. So we think we can just turn all them switches off and just be done with it, and it doesn't work that way. I mean, it sounds good. And you still got to deal with you, right? Is that You still got to deal with who you are as a person. No matter how far <laughs> you run, you're always going to be right there. Exactly. It's, it's a process. It's a lifelong process because, you know, four years, and I still have bad days. I can't lie on that. Like, my right. life is not perfect. There's still things that I learn today. Um, and that's going to be the rest of my life. You know, I'm going to have days where I struggle. That's okay. I'm not going to put myself down for that. I'm fucking human and I'm in recovery. Not every day is going to be all happy fucking sunshine. Right. That's just what it is. But that don't that's mean I'm going to stop trying. Putting the pieces together back on that arm, right? Oh, yeah. Show me the tattoo. Let me see. Which one is it on? Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah, dude. That's healing up so nice. Isn't it? Though? Turn it this way. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, it is. It's healing up good. I like it. It's amazing. Hell yeah, that's cool, man. Like, uh, so we kind of talked about what you're doing because you have a like. What do you do to stay straight? But do you go to meetings because you have your family base there? You got a purpose. You got a reason to get up. You got somebody to talk to. You're communicating with your partner every day, right? I feel like all those things are huge steps in maintaining, right? What else do you do to maintain? Okay, so. I did meetings for a long time. Um, I do not do them now. If I feel like, you know, I've got that phone in my hand, I'm ready to get high, I will go to a meeting. Um, no ifs, ands, and buts about it. I will go. Um, it just ended up not... Things changed, I guess. We'll go with that. Um, so I don't do the meetings anymore. At this point, I keep myself very busy with my family. Um and other people. I do a lot of positive affirmations, things like that for myself. I do a lot of more spiritual things for me. Um, I have an extremely big network that I talk to. So, no, I don't go to a meeting or anything like that. But I do still have everyday talks with, you know, whoever I'm talking to that day um, that's in recovery and things like that. Um, I'm also a peer. So a peer recovery specialist, I'm not fully certified yet, but I am a peer recovery specialist. So for me, it is more of a spiritual thing at this point. You know, I'm not getting high, none of that. Um, it's, I keep myself busy. Right. So that's good, though. But it's about getting up and having some. So idle hands are the devil's workshop, right? Ain't that yes. one of the things? Yes. So you learn to stay busy. That way you don't have time to sit there with the phone in your hand and even have the thought of getting high maybe? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I get that people, there are some people in meetings that are like, oh, you got to do a meeting or you're going to get high. But I don't think that's true. I think that everybody's recovery can be different. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, to each his own, whoever can think what they want. My pops, um, he has 16 years sober from alcohol. He does not do meetings. Um everybody's a little different for me the meetings just stopped being something happy for me it was at one point i was very happy to go i don't have that feeling anymore unfortunately um but it helped when you needed it to help it did it got me through it got me part of to where i'm at today and i feel like addiction is like two magnets you know two magnets either suck together or they push apart yeah and as you are starting to get away from your addiction it's still trying real hard to come together but there's a certain point where one of them flips and they actually start to push you away because you have so much yeah. clean time your body's not relating your brain back to that feeling you don't revert back to oh i could numb it with you know this fill in the it. blank yeah because you've learned to deal with it for so whatever in you know two years four years you know starts pushing then you don't really need those meetings. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I mean, again, if I if I felt like I was really at that point, I would take myself to one. I'll be I would call someone up, probably Eric, and be like, "Look, can we go to a meeting today?" Right. Um, and I have no problem with that. It's just not an every week, every day thing for me at this point in my life. Mm -hmm. But again, no. But it's I'm another just... one of the tools that you could use if you need to. You yeah, got your network course. and people to talk to at home, but you know you can use that if you need to. Yeah. I mean, again, my biggest thing, I'm a communication person. Like I am that is what helps me through things. So like my family is, you know, I'm very close with them. Of course, 
there's days where I'm like, I don't want to talk to my family about this. So I got other people on the outside. Like my support network is great. Um, there it's big and it's wonderful. They help me get through things. And of course my kids, which is usually what helps me through that shit. Cause I have to, sometimes I got to take a step back and look at the shit around me. I have to get, start being grateful. You know, sometimes I think we all get a little ungrateful and we're mm-hmm. like, Oh, I want this. I want that. I have to take a step back for myself. And I'm like, look at the shit around you that you have done. You have a place, you have all this and that, that you didn't have before. And these beautiful fucking kids. And I, that helps me every single day. It helps to hmm. have that relationship that I can talk to someone about yeah. my shit. It helps that I have these kids. And again, to look around me and be like, you know, I did that. I can keep doing this. Like, I, I'm going to be okay. I got right. this. I got that. So acknowledge your accomplishments. Yeah, I have to. I have to be able to do that. Um, self-worth was never big for me. So it's something I had to learn. Okay. Um, so it's something I do every day again, like with my positive affirmations with me. Because um, I just wasn't self-love, self-worth, all that. It was hard for me. So that's something big in my recovery now is, you know, loving myself and knowing that I am worth something. And it's not always easy, but I do that for myself and I deserve that. Yeah, man. I think we all deserve that chance to get away from that horrible, chaotic. Uh, it's just a, it's the gutter, right? It's a, it's a bad place to be. <clears throat> And there's so many people that stuck into it and think there's no way out of it. I think that sucks, you know. And and some yeah. people are super functional when they use. I'm not a functional addict. This is not me. When I start using it, it's pills before bills. I don't pay my <laughs> bills. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but some people drink and smoke and use or whatever it is that you know. And and get. I mean, I smoke every day. I smoke weed. I smoke cigarettes. I drink a couple beers. But yeah. I don't. You know what I mean? I don't sell my body in prison for drugs. I know that's right. <laughs> but I mean, you know what I. You know what I mean? It, it's yeah. just. Uh, it, there's definitely a way out of all that. And I think once you learn how to deal with it, and it sometimes it's through meetings, sometimes it's through whatever else. Um, but it's about how your brain works. Exactly. Yes. You know. I, it's a little bit different when people get into addiction older because you've had a little time to understand. But when you get into it as young as, like you did, younger than me, but when we're that young and your brain hasn't even developed, you don't even understand, and you're already numbing things, I think that makes it a whole lot harder to come out of that hole, doesn't it? Well, yeah, because I never, I don't think I really ever learned how to fully grow up and be an adult at the age I was. I was, like, I think, 25 when I finally got clean right or is that 24 whatever the age was mm-hmm. um i just never really learned that i learned partying <laughs> i mean i somehow graduated high school i don't know how i really don't but i didn't i didn't know how to grow up i didn't learn that at right. that time so it took a lot and it's still i'm still now learning some things like i finally know how to do my taxes so that's pretty great <laughs> yeah yeah. Right, graduated high school and didn't learn shit. No. They don't teach you nothing about that type of stuff, though. I was that person that studied 10 minutes before my test. Yeah, well, <laughs> I quit in the ninth grade, but I was the same way. I didn't do homework. I just, I would listen a little bit and. That was that. C's at the end. I did great up until girls got involved. You know what I mean? Up until like fifth, sixth grade when the girls really started kissing on me and shit. I was like, fuck school work. I just kidding. You know, period to period. That's all I cared about, too. Well, yeah, that was the fun part. Yeah, and then quit school and just started, you know, smoking, stealing, and going crazy. You, you don't know what the world's about yet. And you're doing all that crazy shit and thinking that's what the whole world is. And then when you live 20 years past it, you're looking back going like, God damn, why was I, you know? What Again, happened? youth is wasted on the young because, like, all those years I could have been doing something great. Instead, I was just fucking everybody's life up around me. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's how it happens, though. But I mean, we're at where we're at now. And I try to think about that. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah my, my past is fucked. Whatever. We're going to leave it that is there. What it is. I learned what I learned and I'm going to keep moving on. And I want to try yeah. to be able to teach people that, you know, you don't always have to get burnt. Yeah. All right. If I say it's hot, man, trust me, it's hot. You don't have to go over there and touch it. I always had to touch it. 
Sometimes I touch it twice, once with each fucking hand. Just to make sure. Yeah, just to hold it that way. But, Ow! And then both my hands were burnt. I just like to be able to tell people, you don't have to do that. I got youngins in my life now that I try to tell them some of that stuff. And some of them might listen, some of them don't. You talk about Erica. You met Erica in jail. It's funny you meet people in jail like that and go through that shit with them and then make a friendship. I've met more people in jail and prison than I could ever count. But the few that I'm still good friends with, you know what I mean, yeah. um, stand out. And one of them is still in the same cycle. You know, 45, 46 years old, still doing the same shit that he was doing when we met in 99. Oh, gosh. That's, that's a 99 while ago. 99 is 25 years ago. And we're tight. I love him like a brother. But he'll listen to me for three months, and then he'll crash. And then he'll call me, and he'll listen for two, three, six months, and then he'll crash again. That's just how it happens sometimes. It's sad. It's hard, but. And you root for him so much, don't you? Oh, every time. Yeah, I'm rooting for him every day. He may, I mean, you never know. People can surprise you because he might eventually get it. I hope he does. You know? I hope he does. You just, you never know. Sometimes I was told you have to find that thing. And of course, for me, the biggest thing, it was my daughter. Um, I got a pregnant a month into drug court. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was my thing. So maybe he hasn't found that yet. But I think, you know, there's hope for everybody. Yeah. yeah, you know, I don't care what age you are. Well, I would rather that. be surprised with someone getting clean than surprised with their funeral. Because I've been to too many fucking funerals in the last two years, or even the ones that I didn't go to that I know about. And, you know, all of them drug-induced deaths, but, you know, it's fucking terrible, and I don't want to see yeah. that happen to these people. It, it's gotten bad nowadays. I, You know, I read about it and all that shit, and I hear about it. Because even though I might not be in the streets, I still keep an eye on people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I know that I'm happy to be out of that life because I hear just how much worse it's gotten, how much more potent shit is now. And I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah, like, scary. What happened? Yeah. Why are dope dealers wanting to kill all, kill all the people that they're, they're getting money from? It's crazy. Nowadays, it's, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, I'm glad to be out of it too, man. I'm glad you're out of it. Uh but I appreciate you coming. Yeah. I think you had a lot of good things to say. You know, you got to keep doing what you're doing, making sure that whatever is working stays working, right? That's Adjust it do. a little bit as you go. I try to do that. I've been focusing a lot on me. Just me. I'm not a very, I've never been a very humble person, but even I had an incident happen yesterday where I don't feel like I was at fault at all. And it took a lot of thinking. To be like, yo, what did I do wrong? Like, yeah. how did I? And then it, it really comes back to I didn't know this and I didn't know that and certain, and, you know. But I wasn't even worried about, well, you should have and they should have and why didn't. I was like, what did I do, man? What did I do? Well, how could I have done something different? How did I fuck that up? That's a good way to think about it, though. Yeah, it is, man. It's just it's hard, but it's also like it's just me trying to grow, man, be better than, you know, I was yesterday, I guess. That's awesome. That's what. That's all you can do. Yeah. You know, because that shit's possible. Like, that story don't have to end. Mm -hmm. And I say that to everyone. Recovery is possible. Like, your road, your story, none of that has to end right here. Like, it's okay to reach that hand out and ask for help. And even though it's, for me, it's hard to trust. A lot of people, it's hard to trust. Sometimes you just got to have that one little fucking glimpse of trust to just put that hand out and be like, I need you. I need some help. And that's just okay. Right. And know that it's possible, man. You got to know Anytime. your body will feel better. You got to know your brain will come back around. All that we do heal. Like your body's going to heal up. It's going to be good. Uh, it's hard to think about that sometimes. I remember sometimes going into withdrawals and it was the most terrifying, horrible thing ever. Because I didn't understand that there was another side to it. it. To me, it was death. It was like, this is death. Oh, yeah. There is no thing past this. This is the most horrible thing ever, ever, ever. I didn't understand that I could think my way through that and understand that this is just a feeling your body's going through. It's like a cold. It's only going to last pass. so long, yeah. and then you're going to be healed. It'll pass every time. You just got to get through that dying part real quick. <laughs> right. You just got to die and then come back to life. Yeah, but yeah it's terrifying, though. It but, yeah, is. it's definitely possible. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you came. I appreciate you giving me some time. Thanks for having Tattoo's me. Tattoo's healing up good. I'm glad to see that. Oh, it's darker it than I thought it was going to be, but it, that's it. good. It's going to stay that way. 
I'm ready for a new one. Well, we can set that up right now. We might have to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, you want to drop any social links or anything like that? Where can anybody find you? You know? Um, all right. Well, if anybody needs to talk or anything, I'm laid back. I'm chill. Promise I got you. You can look at Destiny Vanskoy on Facebook. Uh, that's really the only social media I get on. Um, I'm not big on social media at this point, but if you send a message, I always see those. I'm up at all times of the day, night, whatever. I've got kids, so I'm constantly up. Uh, if you just need to talk, you need to vent, you just want me to shut the fuck up so you can talk or you want me to talk, I got you. Like, Reach that hand out. I got you. Let me grab your hand and help you. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. So I like it when y'all do that. I like that. So, yeah, leave a like, leave a comment. You know what I mean? And if you want to message her, message her. Tell her what y'all think of this interview. You know, thank her for, you know, giving the time up. But uh, likes are free. Leave us a like. Thanks, y'all. Awesome. Thank you.